to it, y'all. Uh, the first thing, I normally do not like to talk about people with mental mental disabilities. I talk about everybody for the most part. But I try not to talk about people with mental disabilities. I try not to even talk about Kanye West at all. However, I don't think that his performances that he is displaying has anything to do with his mental condition. <clears throat> we got pictures, and I post them on the community board, of Kanye West and his new wife, if he got married last year sometime, on the way to the studio, child. You know that when you go take your clothes to the dry cleaners and they give it back to you with a plastic bag covering it, that's what she was walking in. She walking around in dry cleaner couture, butt ass naked underneath the clothing. The only thing, like her, her the writing on the plastic bag was covering up her nips and her JJ. Uh, but her ass cracked and back was all out as well. She she a small breasted woman, so it didn't take much for the writing on the on the dry cleaner bag to cover her up. But that's what she had on and some rain boots or some easy boots. I'm not sure what they are. And he had on a full gas mask. Uh, a poncho, uh, a, a vinyl poncho, some of his other garb underneath, and rain boots as well, with long sewer gloves. You know, the kind that you clean the toilet out with, the rubber ones. That's what he was wearing on the way to the doggone studio, child. I, 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 it's not mental. It is not, this is not mental at all. This is him being narcissist. I don't know too many. I don't think I know a narcissist to be diagnosed with a mental instability, although they may need to revisit that, that they actually have to go, go seek help for, um, that they may possibly get a disability check for. So I wouldn't classify that as somebody, as, as a, a condition that can be controlled by medication or, or uh, therapy. <laughs> That's something that's inbred in you. That's something that you choose to be, in my opinion. Um, but it's not just him. It's the women that always get involved with him. And I asked the question, where his loved ones? He ain't got no friends, no family that's holding him accountable, that's want to intervene. Nobody say, dog, come on now, you know this is stupid. We in this fucking climate out here now that if we say anything that's against what the person is doing, then we must be haters. We we got a phobia against them. No, somebody need to tell these motherfuckers something straight every once in a while. Somebody need to sit them down and have a real heart-to-heart -heart with their black asses, their crazy asses, they whatever type of asses once in a while. Everything ain't about mental health. I hate that they try to keep putting out every fucking action this motherfucker take on mental instability. No, it ain't. This is a choice he's making. He's cho choosing to get a uh, to dress in a way which draws attention so he can play victim when people talk about him. He's choosing to dress in a way to get the conversation started. Narcissism, egotism, Vanity. That's what that's what he's suffering from. And then you got people out here copying the bullshit because you know he got followers that's gonna do whatever they say he say do. Or every, whatever he do, they gonna do too. I still be shocked when I see people walking around with them ugly ass Yeezy shoes on. Ain't nothing faster than about them some bitches at all. But y'all buying them paying three, four, five hundred dollars for that shit because it's Yeezy. Okay, so let me go on to some other stuff. Okay, remember I reported on the guy Cody Heron, who had uh, the dirtbag writer, the YouTuber that jumped on the woman's car and busted out her car window to pull out a gun on and head butter and all that stuff. And I said that he they finally arrested his ass and then he was holding him on a two million dollar bond. But his lawyer went to court trying to get the bond reduced, and the judge said, "Okay, I'm gonna increase that shit." They raised it to four million dollars, so he was being held on a four million dollar bond. Uh -huh. And then the uh, city of Philadelphia went around and racked up all his damn friends, got their ATVs and the rest of the people, uh, other people that was affiliated with the uh, the whole incident. But in addition to just the the, the, 
the dirt bike, the unregistered dirt bike riders who ride them on public streets, the things supposed to be riding on in Philadelphia. Yeah, they start racking all them up. They had like a big sting that lasted about a month or so. They was racking people up. Well, he pleaded guilty. He pleaded for aggravated assault and a weapons charge. I don't know um, how much time he is looking at. And if that covers all the things that they were actually charging him with, I did not do a deep dive into a check because I just saw it this morning that uh, yeah, he pleaded guilty. Okay. Happy Black History Month, baby. Okay. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> um, then we had another arrest. So I am so sick of arguing or debating black men about this upcoming election. I had a few men come to me and say that overall black men are not in support of Donald Trump. Based on statistics, black men represented 80% of votes for other people, not Donald J. Trump. Okay. However, just based off of conversations I've been a part of, um, social media, well, to, for me to reach the masses, um, interviews done by, um, just interviews, period. Regular people, celebrity people, just interviews. I am seeing an upward movement of black men and Latinos that are voting for Trump. Or at least they're they're arguing the reason why they would vote for Trump. Half the motherfuckers probably don't even know. I, I learned that over time that a lot of people that argue and debate about voting for him don't even vote. They just like having the arguments, right? And if they would vote, this is who they would vote for. That type of situation. So, when I look at my numbers, just this is based off of me only, not national statistics, the percentage of people that I'm hearing that are black men who saying they are voting for him or they are in support of him, they are the 80%. Contrary to what the, uh, the few people who have said they're not. As I say, they came, came with me with numbers like, no, nah, girl, 80% of black men not supporting him. And I'm saying, look at your comrades. Talk to your comrades and be honest with them. Listen to what's going on on the social media. And listen to what's going on in these news interviews with celebrities or, or none other guys, you know. Listen to them and make, make your own percentage chart. Out of the 10 people that you listen to, eight of them saying they are voting for him. Eight of them don't give a damn if he's a criminal or not. Eight of them, out of the ten, I'm saying out of the ten, eight of them feel that him being a criminal makes him more relatable. Okay, I'm, I'm riding with the crazy people. I left a little bit late today. I see I'm riding with the crazy people because I'm riding with the tailgaters now. These are the motherfuckers who also left late. And now they want to rush me. Well, that's nothing to happen. Okay, but that's, just what, that's what I'm seeing. So, we know Killer Mike has been, he's a rapper, for those who don't know, um, has been a voice piece for the black community. Um, there's a lot of things that he says that I have agreed with over time. And there's a lot of things he says that I have. Same way I feel about Dr. Johnson, Umar Johnson. There's some things he say I agree with, some things that he said that I don't. Okay. Um, when it comes to politics, and who to vote for that's one thing I do not agree with Killer Mike on of course he was out there lambasting Biden and telling everybody to vote for Trump or support Trump and then the third um, we know we had um, Ice Cube do it last election I have not supported Ice Cube since I'm telling you <laughs> but we had uh, yeah so Killer Mike is doing it now and uh, you know he went to the Grammys the other day and just after after he got his little three Grammy wins, 
he uh got arrested. He got arrested supposedly for an altercation with a security guard in at the arena that they were holding the Grammys in at the venue. Um, his def he says that this was an overzealous security guard. I don't know what that means. What was he overzealous in doing? You're at the Grammys. What what was going on in that moment that made this security guard even interact with you? That I don't know yet. If y'all know, drop it in the comment section. Let me know where y'all saw it so I can go see it too. So he after he got his Grammy noms, you know, they let the show go on, and afterwards he got arrested for an altercation with the security guard. I call it karma. Hey, 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 goodbye. That's what I call it. Y'all heard popping off all the guns, spewing that bullshit about both of Trump. Look what you got. You're going to be locked up with your buddy. Going to be locked up with your good buddy. But there's a lot more rappers coming out. That's, uh, the same way they did in the first election. You know, when Lil Wayne and Kodak Black and all them other motherfuckers came out and supporting him because he was throwing out partners left and right that they had to pay for. And that's, that's, he was selling partners. Allegedly. Anywho, uh, but yeah, it was like $2 million, something like that per part. I thought, if I remember correctly, I don't have my notes in my, uh, to cite it, so we're going to go with allegedly right here. But yeah, they well, he wasn't doing it out the kindness of his heart. He was, you know, making a profit off of it. But, um, yeah, Snoop Dogg came out, who, somebody who has been openly vocal about his dislike for, for Trump um, as a leader, is now saying, ah, you know what? I respect the man and fully support him. Why? Because his friend got a pardon. Or somebody he knew of got a pardon during his election time, or during his 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 reign of terror, Trump's reign of terror. Um, and Snoop is forever grateful for that. This is not somebody who was presumed to be innocent and got caught up in the system. And this is somebody who actually committed said crime. Same as um, you know, Dumb Donald. Um, you know he. he He's trying to get the inmates on his on the side. I guess that's what it is. Um, so yeah, so for that, you know, Snoop is forever grateful and is in support of Dun Donald. To Snoop, shut the fuck up. Go sit in the corner, smoke your weed till you want your voice is no longer vocal. Shut the fuck up and take that ignorant bullshit somewhere else. Speaking of some more ignorant bullshit, 50 cents. Now, I admire 50 Cent as a businessman. Um, and, and usually, when he has conversation, it's not just him joning on people. Then I can rock with him, right? I, I even find him hilarious at times. I remember there was one point in time where he thought that Donald Trump was uh, a viable candidate. And that, that was mainly because he didn't like Hillary. Um, but then he started, then he, he got in the office and 50 Cent changed his tune. And it was like, hell no, this motherfucker's a tyrant. I don't support him, don't like him, don't fuck with him, right? Well, just the other day, 50 Cent made a post on his Instagram page saying maybe Trump is the answer. And I responded to him, now you know goddamn well he ain't never the answer. But what he did that for the state of New York has decided to give benefits to uh, the migrants that are in New York, homeless migrants, right? Um, and from what the people are saying, because I didn't look into it deeply, they are saying that the amount that they are paying these people is more than people who are already on welfare and stamps are receiving. And that's what everybody is angry about. To me, it kind of reminds me of the argument that they, sir, what you doing? The argument that people are having with the student loan. They don't want people to have their student loans get paid off because they have they get paid because they had to pay their own. That's the, that's the type of mindset that I'm picking up.
from this argument. So, the migrant workers. The United States allows um, a large numbers of migrant people to come into the country. Um, they have one year to apply for asylum once they are received. If the number of people coming to the country exceeds 5,000, that's what they do a cutoff. 5,000 a day. So between 2001 and now, there have been almost 600,000, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, migrants who have came into the country by way of um, boat, by way of crossing the Mexican border, by way of crossing the Canadian border. There has been people coming to the country, okay? Um, a lot of them the scene on the state of New York, which is so surprising to me, because it's cold as fuck up there. But I heard a rumor before that the state of New York, even though social security numbers are normally a requirement for you to have in order to work, the state of New York was one of those states that didn't trip off that shit. That they would hire anybody, regardless if they had a valid social security number to work or not. That's what I, I heard from a lot of my friends who uh, are not who are not citizens of the United States. When they first arrive, but they normally have a year to file for asylum. In most cases, um, these people are homeless, so they don't have a mailbox for them letter, those letters to go to to tell them what their deadline dates is, what their court dates is. So a lot of them miss it, and you know they end up being considered undocumented people here in this country. Um. So, I think I wrote it down. I did write it down. What they're going to get... What they're going to bring... Okay, so, the initiative... They, they plan to launch a $53 million pilot program that's going to provide prepaid credit cards to 500 migrant families at the Roosevelt Hotel purchasing food and baby supplies. Now, that seems to be a lot of money for 500 people. I will agree. Okay? Okay, but the initiative aims to save the state, the city of New York, not the state, correct, so my correction, the city of New York, over $7.2 million annually um, that may be attributed to like medical costs, um, you know, having homeless out there, it affects tourism, things like that. Um, but those are things, that's what they expected to save. And they and they may expand the program to encompass all 15,000 migrant families that are, are in hotels. The prepaid card is going to be managed by a company called Mobility Capital Finance, and they are going to be restricted to specific stores, and require that an affidavit, and require an affidavit to ensure that funds are spent solely on approved items. These people are said to receive more than citizens already on previous government funding. So, because the city, I, like I said, correction, I said the state, the city of New York is planning on giving 53 million to these migrant peoples to help them save 7.2 million annually <laughs> um, this is why 50 cents is now caping for Donald Trump make it make sense they don't even fucking match what does putting Donald Trump in office have to do with how the city decides to spend their money unless you were saying to me Curtis Jackson that you want dumb Donald to strip the city of their rights to make their own local laws. You want the you want dumb Donald to strip the city of their right to spend their budget how they see fit. This is where voting in local elections matter. If you have a problem with how the city is allocating funds then you should be voting in those local elections to get people in office to represent 
your point of view and your values. But elected dumb Donald into office ain't the motherfucking way. But I saw so many people in the comment section under that post agreeing with him because they just as dense as the statement that he fucking made. Piss me off. Oh, okay. What I'm talking about last and least. Oh, we got to, I got, I'm almost at work. I got to really talk about this. Trump trials. The D.C. District Court of Appeals has decided that Dumb Donald is not going to receive 100% immunity. There is no such thing for him or any president that came before him or after. Okay. Um, what this means <laughs> is that he can be criminally trialed for the things that he has criminal cases on against him on. Um, of course, he said that he's going to appeal to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court no normally does not review criminal cases. So that may work in the favor of the people who believe he should be incarcerated. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, so the two, one of two things may happen. The Supreme Court may just reject to review it all together, which makes the D.C. Court of Appeals uh, ruling final. Um, or they may take up the review and still decide with the D.C. Court of Appeals <laughs> still making the ruling final. Um, I was listening to a lot of different legal pundits and every last one of them, conservatives, liberals, all of them are all saying this is an air type ruling. It's a 57 page decision and they covered their asses so tightly that a fart can't even get out. That they see no way constitutionally that the uh, Supreme Court can go in and throw out this ruling or overturn this ruling at all. So, for those of us who are looking and waiting for that doggone uh, trials to begin, this criminal trial to begin, this is good news for us, okay? But like we always say, don't celebrate too soon. Feel good about it, but don't celebrate too soon because anything can happen, baby. We already know this is delaying the trial. His trial has already been removed from the docket, the one that's supposed to start on March 5th in regards to, in connection to the January 6th insurrection and trying to take over the uh, government. We already know that's been delayed. It has completely removed from the docket at this point. And if he decides to go to the Supreme Court and file appeal, that's going to delay that even further. But people are expecting that that case may go forward at least by May. And one of the reasons why is because Eileen Cannon, the one who's supposed to be having the documents trial in May, keeps delaying in favor of Trump. We already know that she helps Trump out every step of the way. And she keeps delaying um, her court cases. She hasn't even done the damn simple thing yet where she goes through the documents and see what documents are classified and, and who has the legal authority to review those documents. Remember I told you that the, the lawyers had to get clearance and everything? She hasn't even held that. She keeps delaying it, right? And by her continuously delaying it, she is forcing Jack Smith to release over documents that would be then classified to attorneys who have no legal right to have them at this particular point. Um, and by her doing so, Jack Smith may have the legal means to get her ass removed. Okay? It's very possible. So I'm following that closely. But in regards to that documents case, We've learned that there was a secret room at Mar Lago that the FBI didn't know about. If I'm not mistaken, it was two secret rooms, a secret closet, that there may very possibly be more documents in. Child, you would think by now that them dumb motherfuckers would have got rid of all that shit by now. But I guess he figured the room was secret enough that nobody would know. It ain't that secret because Jack Smith done found out, child. No, I didn't research to figure out how he found out, but he done found out. Well, in his New York civil fraud case, uh, one of his witnesses, who also was a defendant, um, Weisselberger, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that's how his name is, um, 
is now being looking at for perjury to the court. According to Letitia Green and, and, and Alvin Bragg, um, he perjured himself on the witness stand and lied about having knowledge about Donald Trump's property valuation and um, whether he knew about certain properties at all, you know. Um, he perjured himself. So now he's looking to get a plea deal to cover his ass in regards to that trial child. It's more shit left and right. More bullshit. I, I don't... I'm not... I'm not seeing or I'm not understanding how everybody connected with dumb Donald in all these different cases are all getting time. They're all being found guilty. But it's still up in the air for people to see how dumb Donald ain't guilty. It's still people out here saying, well, he ain't been convicted yet. And that's the reason for saying that he ain't. Come on, man. 91 felony accounts. Two impeachments. Sexual assault charge. Rape charge. They were, the G is silent, you know, just for YouTube purposes. Um, have already been determined by the courts. All those have already been determined. A legal fraudster, sexual assaulter, rapist. And the courts have already determined he was an inspectionist. They've already determined that too. And they still willing to hold this motherfucker down if by any means necessary. And they got the nerve to call themselves patriots. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Um, Nikki Haley. One of the GOP people that's running for election. Okay. So they had the, the, the primaries in Nevada. Now remember they already had the Nevada caucus which Donald Trump won the caucus, which, you know. Um, but Nikki Haley was one of the uh, people who decided not to be part of the caucus. She wanted to do the primaries, right? Well, they had the primaries the other day, child. And she did not win. She came in second to nobody. You heard that right. No one at all. 62% of the people who showed up to vote decided, they took their time out their day, waited in line at the voting lines I have long it took, and decided to walk in there and place a vote for none of these candidates, which was a category on that ballot. 42,000 people chose to come out and vote for none of these people. They still exercising their right to vote. You know, because you get some people that just stay the fuck home. They came out, said, we're going to vote. Show how much we don't like her ass. Which means she doesn't get the delegates. Dumb Donald will, because he won the primary caucus. That's so sad. That's so sad and funny at the same fucking time. Mama, bitch. Okay, so I was going to talk a little bit about Jay-Z in this Grammy thing. Um, Jay-Z feels that because Beyonce is the most, has received the most Grammy Awards, um, it's a shame that she has never received um, album of the year. Um, I know y'all finna be mad as enough at me. Based off of the criteria which they vote, she don't deserve album of the year. Um, the album of the year requires at least eight nominations. The voting board um, actually votes on the nominations for all the categories. They removed the anonymous voters uh, two, two years ago, 2021. So now the voting members of the, which are active producers and stuff in the industry, right? Well, which I believe Jay-Z is one of them, or he used to be. Um, these are the ones who vote on the categories. So for song, uh, album of the year, um, It's three other categories. They have to receive at least eight votes. Okay. Um, all of the people who vote, the nominees,
denominator to vote um, or the voters, they can only vote in six categories of those 16 total. Because six categories of the top was and 10 of the not top. So hold on a second. Of the um, not top. So the way it works. Okay, so to win album of the year, you need eight votes to win. Same as song of the year, the best new artist, the record of the year. This is lower than it was in 2021, which they needed 10. All Grammy ballots are casted by the Recording Academy voting members and the substitute classification and qualifications under the rules. So um, they can only vote 16 categories each out of the many categories that the, the, the Grammys held. Um, the, the voting, the categories that they can vote in is something that they are actively engaged in as a category peer. So a producer who um, only produce rap albums cannot vote on the writing of an opera, if that makes sense to you, right? Um, not one time that I saw in her career that she had nominations more than five for one album um and that was in 2004 for dangerously in love that's one of actually my favorite bodies of work for her um she was nominated for six um uh, on that particular album she won five and she won best album but not album of the year um but looking at her her body of work and things that she was actually nominated for on average, she's normally nominated for one song. Or she's nominated maybe for like the best duo group and a song. So she may have two nominations, but one of them is for being part of the group, and one of them is actually maybe for a performance, but not necessarily for bodies of work on a particular album. The Dangerously in Love one in 2004 was the one she received the most nominations for. And like I said, one which was album, best album, but just not album of the year. Um, so looking at over the years of the things that she was nominated for, maybe you could say she was snubbed in the nominations, but as far as how they determine whether or not that person gets album of the year, she did not qualify. She does not qualify. Um, I'm quite sure if you just love her work, love her as a person, no matter what, you may think differently. Um, but yeah, she doesn't at all. So let's say if I'm one of the nominees and I'm a person that may, maybe skip over half her album, I'm probably not going to vote for that for album of the year over one that I listened through all the way through with, with a soothing ear. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's one vote that she don't have. But you like say out of all the voting members, they only could choose to vote in sixteen categories. It's very possible that they didn't choose album of the year to vote in, which also lessens how many votes that she received on that particular year. Because at least eight members have to vote for her to receive album of the year. Um and yeah. A, a, a vote is a, a liking contest. If they don't like it, they ain't gonna vote for it. That's just plain and simple there now. Plain and simple math for me. Anywho, if y'all wanted to see um, more TV and spill, y'all know Monique was on Club Shay Shay. Um, she's helped, she's supporting a lot of the stuff that Cat Williams said, I believe. I haven't watched it, but I believe she will support a lot of the things that Cat Williams said. Um, I could bet a dime to a dozen, though, that most people ain't gonna hear her because it's Monique, and most people don't like Monique for the same reason they didn't like her uh, speaking out back when she spoke out because she's saying the same thing that Taraji said that everybody was in support of her. I said she possibly was gonna say the same shit that Cat Williams say, and people still gonna find reason to turn Monique ass down and say that she a liar. Um, like I said, I haven't listened to it though, I haven't listened to Cat Williams. Um, in totality, I listened to a clip um, on some of the things. I probably listened to a clip on some of her things, too. But that's how y'all gonna hear from me about it. I got my wrong glasses. My glasses ain't... Um, my glasses ain't doing what it's needed to do. They're basically the same damn glasses from different lenses, child. I'm late. I'm later than late. Let me get 
get on over here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Leave your comments down in the comment section what you thought about it. I think I just see it. See you next video. Peace.